New Zealand's ancient kauri tree yields major scientific discovery. Now, this information came out months ago when they unearthed a 40,000-year-old kauri tree in New Zealand when they were excavating for a large industrial site. And subsequent scientific analysis, well, has led to leaps and bounds in the magnetic reversal scientific endeavors. In fact, a paper coming out yesterday has blown the lid off of what magnetic excursions or reversals actually do on Earth. And they control, like we've been saying for years, evolution by driving mass extinction and causing speciation. Now let's get to the information. This video is going to be a, a general overview on magnetic field strength over time and the linkage between extinctions and that low geomagnetic field strength. So follow us along on the awesome classroom. An ancient well-preserved tree that was alive the last time Earth's magnetic poles almost flipped during the Lachamp excursion has helped scientists pin down more precise timing of that event, which occurred about 42,000 years ago. This new information has led them to link the flipping of the poles or the excursion of them to key moments in the prehistoric record, like the sudden appearance of cave art hmm. and the mysterious extinction of large mammals and even Neanderthals, which by the way are large mammals. They argued that the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field would have briefly transformed the world by altering its climate and allowing far more ultraviolet light to pour in, as well as cosmic rays, but they didn't mention that here. Now, their proactive analysis in the Journal of Science is sure to get researchers talking. Until now, scientists have mostly assumed that magnetic field reversals didn't matter much for life on Earth. Now, that statement alone is embarrassing because it's not true. I have known for decades that it is the supposition of I and others that magnetic reversals cause all evolution on the planet. Now, until now, scientists have mostly assumed that magnetic field reversals didn't matter much for life on Earth. But it takes 30 years to catch up to speed anyway. Although some geologists have noted that die-offs of large mammals seem to occur in periods when Earth's magnetic field was weak. The Earth's magnetic field has been flipping on a regular periodicity about every 12,500 years, and that's the same time frame when speciation and extinction occurs. And this also corresponds to when charged cosmic ray particles from outer space bombard the planet. Sometimes, for reasons scientists don't fully understand, the magnetic field becomes unstable and its north and south poles wander or flip. Now, the flipping hasn't occurred for hundreds of thousands of years, but the wandering happens every 12,500 years. And this wandering that we're going to be talking about tonight is the Lachamp, the Lachamp excursion. After lava flows in France that contain bits of iron that are basically pointed the wrong way, added insult to injury to what we already barely believe. Volcanic activity back then during the flip, well, actually as an excursion, produced this distinctive iron signature as the molten lava cooled and locked the iron into place. The iron molecules embedded in the sediments around the world also capture a record of this magnetic wobble which unfolded over about, well, just a thousand years. Even though it was short-lived, the North Pole did wander across North America, right out towards New York, actually, and then back again across to Oregon, says Alan Cooper, an evolutionary biologist with Blue Sky Genetics, and the South Australian Museum. He explains that it quote, then zoomed down through the Pacific really fast to Antarctica and hung out there for about 400 years, then shot back up through the Indian Ocean to the North Pole again, which is what we're expecting to happen during this excursion or something similar. 
Now, these changes were accompanied by a weakening of the magnetic field to as low as 6% of its strength as of today. He and his colleagues, Chris Turney, an earth scientist at the University of New South Wales, found a new way to study the exact timing of all this using unusual trees in New Zealand, the kauri tree. Giant kauri trees can live for thousands of years and can end up well-preserved in bogs. The trees themselves are quite unique, says Cooper. They're a time capsule in a way that you don't really get anywhere else in the world, especially one that's recording time 40,000 years ago. My goodness. Inside these trees that lived during the last magnetic excursion that was major, the Le Champ, the researchers and their colleagues looked for a form of carbon created when cosmic rays hit the upper atmosphere. More of these rays come in when the magnetic field is weak. So levels of this carbon, hello, they go up. The trees with their calendar-like set of rings took in this kind of carbon and laid it down as wood. And that let the researchers see exactly when the levels rose, peaked, and then fell again. One tree in particular had a 1,700-year record that spanned exactly the entire period of the greatest change, and that's the Le Champ excursion. Now, by creating a precise timeline, the research team was able to compare the magnetic fields weakening to other well-established timelines in the archaeological and climate records. Hello, are we getting somewhere? We really think there is quite considerable impacts going on here, says Cooper. They also turned to the advanced climate modeling to try to understand how the magnetic changes would have affected conditions on the planet. Now, the biggest effect is the ozone layer in particular, and that would have taken a beating. And we now know that every 11 years during uh, the solar cycle, during solar minimums, the ozone, well, takes a beating. If you damage the ozone layer, as they found out, you change the way in which the sun actually impacts the earth. And that's, well, hello. As soon as you start doing that, you change weather patterns because wind directions and heating goes AWOL. The jet stream becomes what's called meridional flow. It moves up to the Arctic and down to the equator. And well, things go well a little crazy exactly like we've been seeing now. If the sun went through one of its periodic conniptions when the strength of the Earth's magnetic field was turned way down as we're preparing for in the coming decade, any solar flare or storm would send a burst of radiation that could have massive consequences for people living back on the planet. This is what we think actually drove earlier hominids into caves, says Cooper. You would not want to be outside during the daylight hours, as we've been telling you for years here on the channel. Now, Cooper admits it's difficult to draw clear links among these various events at this stage. But he thinks that always, they're always true when you're putting forward such a radical new, new theory. It's not radical, Cooper. It's just radical because you're telling the mainstream now. And they're gobbling it up. He notes that the idea of an asteroid killing off the dinosaurs once seemed far-fetched as well. And other researchers say they are really struck by the fact that scientists were able to construct such detailed records of the timing of magnetic changes by simply looking at these trees. But they're idiots. High resolution temporal records and dendrochronology has been going on for decades and it's not new science, just new to some non-scientists. Many people think this is very impressive including Brad Singer, a geologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison who studies the history of the Earth's magnetic field, but was no part of the research team. Now, Brad claims that this is only a small number of specimens that they measured, but the results look fairly reproducible in different trees and thinks that it's a pretty impressive set of data. And we're going to go through that data in just a second, folks, so just hold on. James Chanel, a geologist at the University of Florida, question whether other kinds of historical records like ice cores support the idea of global climate crisis at 42,000 years. Yes, James, why didn't you go look at them? When another scientist says, I wonder if these data sets do that and they don't have a single second to go look at them, 
They're shills. This guy doesn't care about science. It took me five seconds to corroborate this data, and I am not a paid scientist for anybody except myself. So there's that. And we're going to go over all this with you now because it's so spectacular and so stunning. It's going to blow your mind. The reversal of Earth's magnetic poles have triggered the Neanderthal extinction as well as many other speciation events and extinction events. And it will happen again. And we're going to go over it all with you now. Here's the paper that came out. On the 19th of February yesterday, a global environmental crisis 42,000 years ago by Alan Cooper, Turney, Palmer, Hogg, and McGlone. This is the paper that concludes, based on the tree ring data and the uh, high resolution data that they incorporated, proxy data, that there has been major climatic effects happening during this magnetic excursion. Now, on the same day, Paul Vusen published a, a paper on the same exact topic and he said that there is no correlation or causation on any of this. And Paul Vusen is clearly a paid for shill because the AAAS is suspect to begin with. So that's all I'll say about that. Now let's go over this paper came out 29th of May of 2019. The role of geomagnetic field intensity in late quaternary evolution of humans and large mammals. And I want to read this through for you so you can gain the knowledge. Even if you don't understand it, I will break it all down in the final five minutes. Trust me. It has long been speculated that biological evolution was influenced by ultraviolet radiation reaching the Earth's surface. If you get a sunburn, you know that you shouldn't be out in the sun for long periods of time. So there's the first fact. Now, despite imprecise knowledge of the timing of both UVR flux and evolutionary events, the past strength of Earth's dipole field provides a proxy for UVR flux because its role in maintaining stratospheric ozone. The timing of quaternary evolutionary events has become better constrained by fossil finds, improved radiometric dating, the use of dung fungi as proxies for herbivore populations and improve ages for nodes in human phylogeny from human mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosomes. The demise of the Neanderthals at 41 kilo years can now be closely tied to the intensity minimum associated with the Lechamp magnetic excursion. Whew. What does that all mean? Well, let's put it to you in three dimensional graphs. Here's the Lechamp magnetic excursion. And if we can just use this vertical axis as the field intensity, you can see that the magnetic field intensity during the Le Champ 41.5 thousand years ago was at a minimum. During the Mono Lake excursion, about 34,000, 35,000 years ago at a minimum. During the excursion here at 26,000 and 21,000 that are named, we have minimums. And here, the Younger Dryas event, there's a minimum there. Another minimum at 11.5 and 12.9. Hello! So these low periods are what is causing the extinction events. Now, if we lie the proxy data, the geomagnetic field intensity on the right, to the dung fungi, plus the extinction events in North America, we can see on the, the histogram here, a peak in extinctions at the lowest field intensity. You can also see that these megafaunas all die off here at this line, which corresponds to the Lechamp minimum, the minimum magnetic. And also other megafauna extinctions up here during the Younger Dryas event occurred at 12,800 and 115, two different uh, extinction events. And we're going to now bring it into the hominids for you here here we're looking at the change from Neanderthal to Cro-Magnon as we intermix during the period of 50,000 years ago to 35,000 years ago. In the purple here, all these humps, these are Neanderthal populations that have been confirmed through archaeological study worldwide in all the locations. And you can see them peak and fall, and they all end right here during the bottom of this excursion when the field intensity drops to the lowest level for tens of thousands of years and then recovers. All the Neanderthals go extinct and Cro-Magnon comes into existence right here 
during the first major drop, which causes evolution and more extinction, and then Cro-Magnon lives on, and Neanderthal dies off. This is the way all speciation and mass extinction occurs during these massive cosmic bombardments on our planet. Some species can't make it, others evolve to survive and thrive in the future. And that's what we're talking about. Here we're looking at the entire evolutionary history of all hominids for the last 300,000 years, including Homo sapiens sapien. And that's over here to the left. This is the sapien timeline that brings us up to today to you, modern humans. Here's the Neanderthal line, which splits into four uh, species and ends abruptly at the Le Champ. Here's the Denisovian line, ending at the same Le Champ magnetic excursion. So what we should glean from this is that there were one, two, three, at least four, if not six, hominids living on the planet at the same time. Different species of intelligent, upright, walking hominids for 300,000 years, intermingling. And there was a major extinction and speciation event during the Blake, a magnetic excursion here, which caused Homo sapien to expand into multiple timelines. And then another one prior to the Le Champ during this magnetic excursion. And then the Le Champ ending the Denisovians and the Neanderthals and perpetuating all the Homo sapien lines. What you've been taught in school is not as simple as the actual science. Bigfoot is in the lineage here. People don't get it. There were multiple hominids on Earth at the same time. Six or more that we know about. There could have been way more. Look at how high resolution it gets up here. There's hundreds of different types of species and subspecies at this time. This picture is... Totally bogus, not based on fact. Modern humans were living alongside of not so modern humans, all at the same time. Neanderthal, Denisovian, Floriensis, and Sapien Sapien all were on the planet at the same time. And we're being lied to. Human evolution, the astounding new story of the origin of our species. Forget the simple out of Africa idea. That's not how we evolved. A huge array of fossils, genome studies, has completely rewritten the story of how we came into being. And now, with high-resolution tree ring data that goes back 42,000 years, we're basically proving it one day at a time. You've been lied to. The history that we are living is a mystery because it's a fraud. Proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance when you're living a historical lie. And we're putting it together for you. One magnetic excursion at a time. You're living the next one. So expect an extinction to happen shortly. Unless you're prepared. We always make it through those boundaries. Well, except for Neanderthal. And that's a boom. To knowledge. Be safe. We love you. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Share this on your social media platforms. And be safe. And that's a boom. We love you.